we are still really early in the AI story. If you look at all the survey data we, you see from Fortune 1000 kind of CIOs, you know, what are they doing from an AI perspective? Right now, they're just they're doing tests. They're doing beta analysis. This, this is all came up so quickly. How do we deploy this to the benefit and what's kind of the ROI? And we're really early days there. The longer term implication of this, maybe this even goes to the rates discussion, is, uh, and we're gonna have to deal with this as a civilization, as a country, as, as a world, uh, this is gonna destroy jobs. And that will probably put that supply demand imbalance for labor in a little bit more favorable position from, from an employee, because you're not just competing with you know, two different uh, people working for the same job, but maybe a, a computer option or a uh, software option. So I think that is actually deflationary uh, long-term, because a lot of that productivity is coming from, if, you know, if you can get 20% productivity, 50% productivity, you don't need as many workers. And that might mean a structural increase in the unemployment rate and actually a structural uh, decline in the inflation rate, potentially. And that's just something we're gonna have to deal with. I am bullish on software companies uh, around AI, but you know what makes up software companies? It's mostly software engineers. That's the number one job at a lot of these companies. They don't need as many software engineers as they've had in the past. You can have a situation where these software companies are actually generating higher revenue growth because of AI, but they're also benefiting because they need fewer software engineers to write the code than they did in the past. So you can actually have a really nice situation where revenue growth is accelerating and margins are going the right way as well. T-Roll Prize.